For all of you who listen to Mac East Second Floor Studios presents Submersion and own an Android device, do me a favor. Go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcasts I want to listen to, select them as favorites, and have them all just a click away. Make sure to set Mackie's Second Floor Studios as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. Episode 51! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow. Dude, my grandma, she's such a gray lady. <laughs> I is love she? my grandma. Plural. <laughs> oh, that's... At first you were like, oh, you know. A little sentimental. Then it was. I've just, I've just got one on grody. my mind. She's uh, been dealing with oral cancer. Um, oh my god! But uh, I'm gonna spend Valentine's with her to, uh, Thursday, and uh, Friday she will learn what her uh, prognosis or diagnosis or whatever the hell term it is if she's cancer free or not. She took a, a PET scan last week, so we're gonna we're gonna party on Thursday night. Well, good. Like it's 1999. I hope there it's. You go, man. I hope it's all good news, Ben. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's big stuff. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Okay. For an intro, I, I, got, I, know, I got right? nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> I, well, we do have to. We do have to kind of introduce, or should we do it after the thing? We have to introduce what the new cycle for the because we finished up our 2000 or what, whatever 2018 in review, yes. and then we did the special 50th episode. Yeah. And now we're on. We're on to a new cycle. One. Yeah, Valentine's Day spectacular. Close, sure. I mean, in some ways, yes, because the the actual cycle is trapped. Ooh, yeah, man. So it's about being. It's it's movies or I guess other things potentially. Where what does that mean? Well, I don't know because there's, there's TV comics? shes No, no, no. There's Comic a lot books? of TV shows oh. that involve. Thing. I'm thinking of my favorite one, the Street Sharks episode. Oh, where yeah. in the end it's a submarine trapped in the bottom of the ocean and people have to get rescued or, or they just die they? there or yeah there or they just die there i guess we already That's had one option. where that didn't uh they did not get rescued we're talking about phantom we're talking about a little black sea action so what's uh, the name of this well, movie people, yeah. oh no they died in phantom well, we haven't st- we haven't started yet <laughs> i'm just saying that so these are that's what these the next upcoming ones are going to be including the one tonight trapped Jack, you seem trapped Never no. meant. No, it's not trapped. Uh, what was the? <laughs> that was it's a uh, trap. Headstrong. Crossfit. Oh yeah, it's a trap, man. Yeah, headstrong. Yeah, dude. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> dive, 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 dive. <laughs> I got sound effects. <laughs> oh, my sound uh, isn't working. No, you had the my fart. We effects. had the, we had the fart noise, so that'll work. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, this is just a ramshackle production tonight. This is not. This is not. I there get, it is. Dive, there dive, go, dive, 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 dive. I could give you a real one if you just asked. Dive. What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control, and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. Mac East Second Floor Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, Alex the Mustard Man, the artist formerly known as Brom, Jamie the Brain, Kyle El Capitan, and Zach the Backbone present Submersion. All right. Which is wow. funny. This ep- I think the movie tonight, they ba- they had a, a very real situation of this in terms of di- emergency, blow the emergency <clears throat> horn. They didn't get to dive, I guess. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. This is one of the movies where, you know, we've seen other people where they're drilling people constantly about diving. (laughs) (laughs) What are you watching, Kyle? Uh, Oh, man. I've got Uh, the special edition. Yeah, he watched a different gray lady down. The Brazzers Mm -hmm. edition. (laughs) Brazzers. What's Brazzers? Never heard of it. (laughs) Sure. Right. All right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, Brom, what did we watch tonight? Uh, well, we watched uh, the 1949 Gene Kent and James Donald film, The Gay Lady. Oh. Right. 
Very nice. It was a very pleasant film. I actually don't know what that's about. Um, I guess it's a lady who's quite happy or something. I uh, would uh, assume. No but that's not what we watched. That is not what we watched. Alex, what what did we watch? The 19... well, what, did you mo- what did you mostly watch? I should uh, say. The 1978 crime thriller, uh, dramatic movie, Gray Lady Down. Sure. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily call it a crime thriller. I guess from the Norwegian shipping point of view, it's a crime thriller. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It was, okay. it was Those jo- sons of bitches it was later. A jo- it, yeah. was a, it was a... I would say an murder. act of war, honestly, if you ask it me. Was murder. Wow. It was an egregious act of war. All right. So this is a 1978 film directed by David Green, starring Charlton Heston, David Carradine, St- what did you want to say something? <laughs> no, I was just gonna say it's David Green, Seth Green's brother. No. Yes. Uh, Thank you. He's uh, David Austin Green's father, I think. Stacy anyway. Keach, Ned Beatty, Stephen McHattie, and the one and only Ronnie Cox. Ronnie Cox. This movie, uh, Cox. in case you just are interested, uh, about 111 minutes. Mm. Did you have anything else that the director had directed, or you didn't pick that up? I do not have that off the top of my head. Why, I, you I didn't something? know it either. No, no, no. I was just, I was just wondering, considering how the film was made, and it's kind of like this interesting time between like the modern uh, action thriller kind of films and uh, the older style, because it's right on that boundary. Like, I think Star Wars came out around now, and like um, Jaws and stuff like, and the Warriors and these movies yeah. that really Jaws. started moving towards the eighties blockbuster big time films this was kind of that older style of action thing almost like a golden age of hollywood studio picture he directed roots really yes oh hmm. along with godspell rich man poor man hmm. stick them up i wouldn't have yeah okay interesting okay yeah but uh um, and the devil's disciple i don't know i don't know what that one is i don't know i think no. oh sorry he's an actor in that one okay and so, yeah, should Hold we? On, I just want to make sure. That I, is it the right I person? It, yeah, I don't know if he directed Roots or was just in it. Oh. <laughs> nice. Um, does, anyone, does anyone else have anything else to say about the film before we get into the actual he recap? Of one it? episode of Roots. Um, What's the, the guy that played Superman was also in the movie. I think you forgot to mention him. Christopher oh, Reeve. Oh, yeah, yes, Christopher the Reeve. film <laughs> debut of the one and only. Oh, stomping all over my trivia there. So at, first I thought he was, at first I thought he was the kid at the beginning scene. It was, just looked so happy to be in the film. <laughs> what? You, you know what I'm talking oh, about. Anyways. You know you what know I'm what talking about. Uh, Jamie, yeah, before, we, we, talk before about. we jump in, I do want to say yeah. last week you mentioned Tiptoes. The, yes. <laughs> Did you watch it? I did not, but I, I uh, watched the H3 podcast, which is a uh, YouTube uh, channel I subscribe to, and they had Chris D'Elia on there, and they uh, they just watch like videos and stuff and just riff on stuff, and one of the things they riffed on was uh, Tiptoes. Very nice. Tiptoes. I'm like just up on it because bad movies are way in vogue, so since I'm an expert, I'm pretty much in the zeitgeist. Don't You're very topical. It. It's true. Topical ointment. Uh, all right. So, Gray you Lady You want that to be down. a new name? What, the topical <laughs> ointment? Or just ointment? No, I think the brain's good. <laughs> I like I like ointment. I, I prefer that one better. Yeah. Um, ointment. <laughs> no. Ointment. Hey, what's up, ointment? Oink, oink, oink ointment. See? It was, why? Because he's so topical. Oh! Hey, uh, all right. So, Gray Lady down. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. So- we open on the titular gray lady. Uh, it's the Neptune, and it is a submarine coming into port after a long time at sea, kind of testing things out. It's an older boat, so they're really just testing things out as they change command. Because Charlton Heston, he plays Captain Paul Blanchard, and it's on his final submarine tour be- before he gets promoted up to, like, I don't even know. They just say he's going to, like... Commander of the Navy. Yeah, I think it's of the submarine <laughs> squadron or something, but he's going to be behind a desk basically. And his XO is going to take over the boat. He's kind of he kind of sucks, but he redeems himself. Um spoiler alert. Does he? Well, we'll find yeah. out. Uh but anyways, it's everything's going pretty smoothly. He wants to bring the boat up to port once they've gotten kind of near um, right. Connecticut. Who does? Oh, sorry, he wants to bring it up to the This is important. The captain does. The captain. Yeah. The captain says, "Okay, let's bring the boat up." Uh, as we're, we head into Connecticut, because I want to 
kind of show everyone like the boats coming in and we having this change of command and hurrah. And everyone's excited for this. They love the captain, but they also love this XO. So they kind of like set up this little thing. Like, okay, go up and watch it. It's pretty foggy. So like go up on the watch and we're going to go down and surprise the XO. With, oh, with a, and they surprise him with a little fight. That fight was the pretty bad. The worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, it was really rough and actually kind of embarrassing to watch them do it. But they tried to. All right, so yeah. so to oh, I travel it. Yeah, oh, to, get the, uh, to get the uh, EXO's attention and get him away from important things, they stage a fight in the galley, mm-hmm. and it's two guys pushing each other. One guy's like vanilla, uh, chocolate, no yeah. chocolate, vanilla, and they just keep pushing, and then. The guy breaks it up. It's yeah. Like, what? Is and that, then he goes, oh, I don't know what you guys are. Oh, and everyone's smiling and they're like pretty happy with themselves. Because uh, that's not a shoving match type fight. Mm-mm. It's actually a ruse set up by the captain to give him a new, a gift as like kind of saying like, you're going to be the captain now. Here's, Here's a, a whistle. A whistle. Hope you like it. Yeah. And he's like, and the XO is real like. Kind of, he's touched. He's at a loss for words, and he can't wait to use his new whistle at some point or something. He's like literally that. touched. Liter what? Anyways, um, anyways, at the same time, up on the top of the of the boat uh, on the bridge, uh, not the bridge, the uh, whatever the the sail. Yes, uh, they're kind of looking out and trying to see through the fog, and the sonar Super foggy see, hear or s- notices that there's a ship out there about six thousand yards heading and for a collision. Okay, well. Let me know in 3,000 yards. And at 3,000 yards, still heading for a collision. And we flash over to the, this boat, which is a Norwegian boat heading to uh, New York City. And they, they're, they've they lost sonar. So they don't have it anymore. And they're like, oh, Capitan uh, Sonar. And then the captain's <laughs> like, exactly oh, NYC, uh, we are. Uh. And he's basically saying, we're not like electri- electricians. Fuck that sonar. We can't fix it. We're sailors. It's We need to get to NYC. And they just keep on sailing, even though they even say, like, shouldn't we stop? And the captain's like, well, fuck it. Yeah. No way, man. We're not stopping now. The inter- international language or fuck it and just keep on going. That would be great because it was all subtitled. And if they would have just said, yeah, fuck, fuck it. it. Um, like, what? <laughs> so anyways, they're, they're now they're like, okay, at a thousand yards. And so they signal, they like blast a horn. They start trying to move out of the way. And all of a sudden the ship's on top of them. So it seems like, I don't know if it was off a little bit or they just didn't realize how close it yeah, was, it had, but it comes yeah. out of the fog. They're right on top of them. They try to do some quick maneuvers, but they can't do anything and the Norwegian ship can't do anything. And they totally blow this submarine. Like, oh, the, dude, they the just run right on yeah. into it. Blast and, a huge hole in it. Yeah. And, and guess what? We got a gray lady going down. Oh, that gray lady's going down. And fast. Yeah. And so the back, I think it's the back of the boat is totally flooded. And we see like a whole bunch of people die. They're getting steam in their face. They're drowning. They have to, a bunch of people come through the door, but it's fl- flooding fast. So they have to close it. And they're basically mm-hmm. seeing like their fellow sailors, uh, submariners uh, drown. And they can't stop the boat from going down. So it's like 700, 800, 900. And people are freaking out. They're like, we crush at 1,200. Like, no, but guess Crushed what? Up. Yeah, they keep on going, they keep on going past, Checkmark, and everything's man. fine. Yeah, it's pretty much they're like, This is great. Yeah, this right, is right, so right, cool. time. It's like a we'll ride. Just hang out down here. Yeah, no, but not really. They're pretty scared. Well, people are bleeding like crazy. <laughs> yeah, too. everyone's hurt. They've, they try to blast, blow the ballast and stuff, and they rise for a second, but then they keep on falling. And eventually, they crash onto the ocean floor, and they've, they've kind of landed on a shelf, but on the edge of a canyon. So they were. Kind of, but both luckily they were above the shelf, but unluckily they were right near this canyon because they show a map and if they were anywhere else, they would have been like kind of fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they just would have been sitting there, but instead they land like right on the edge, teetering on the edge of uh, this canyon. Yeah. And, and so, so anyways. They seem fucked and the XO is super out. pissed. Like he's like, great job, Captain. Yeah, bro. Uh, why did we have to surface? Because you wanted to just like sail in there looking super fly on your boat. And he's like, oh, have you seen this jacket? Do I not look super fly? And he's like, okay, valid. It's true. You know you what I would have loved fly. is if the XO got so pissed and he just started blowing that whistle right into Charlton yeah. Heston's <laughs> face. <laughs> but instead, what does he do? He throws that whistle out. They find, oh, it. They okay. find it later. They find <laughs> it like he like, threw it in the garbage. I remember. Yeah, they threw it in the garbage. He threw it in the garbage. That is... A sign of disrespect. It's true. One man gives you a whistle, you do not throw that in the trash. I've cherished the whistle you gave me as yeah. XO of the ship. Mm-hmm. You said, Jamie, you are the best, and I don't like the rest of the people on this podcast as much as you. And I said, thank you, Kyle. Here's this whistle. Thank yes. you. 
And uh, every time he drives by, it goes toot toot. Yep. It's like our own little thing just to mention, just to like indicate to each other how much like better I am than the other people. Right, Kyle? And they've all disconnected. <laughs> just well, well, practically, they're talking about uh, Golden Corral in chat right now. God, it sounds oh, good. Oh, <laughs> very Ooh, nice. Ooh, a little buffet action. <laughs> so anyways, what, what now, this puts everything in motion, right, up uh, on the surface. What? what? Everything? Everything. The entire Navy is like, what the fuck has happened? It was kind of interesting to see some of these old school things happen, too, because they get, like, a warning that this uh, Norwegian ship hit something. It seems like it must have been a submarine that sunk. Yeah. So they're like, okay, which one was, which submarine was it? Well, the only one that was in there around the area was Neptune. And he takes out this like little card, which apparently is like the phone number. Instead of like just like writing on a phone number. He oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. It's like a secret coded phone number for the person who is who's, like in control of that set of submarines or whatever. Or is that just like a really old style computer? Because I remember hearing about well, that's, yeah. cards. I think, no, 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 it is. But it's just funny to see where it's like, we got to call this person. It takes out a card. It's like, jit, 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 and then it just calls someone using the what was on the card. I was yeah. like, well, it's also just a phone number. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> that's, no, that's too easy. Uh, and so they call up um, kind of the head of submarine command, who then calls up um, Stacy Keach, uh, who plays, what was his name? Captain Bennett. And Captain Bennett is kind of in charge, was, was going to be in charge of the um, rescue mission because he's, he knows the people on the submarine. He's kind of mm -hmm. in charge of that submarine. And, and his surface ship is kind of in the area. Yeah. And so he calls up the wife of um, the captain. It's like, hey, tell the wife of the XO also that something's gone wrong. I'm, we're going to do everything we can to get these, get them out kind of stuff. Yep. And so he heads out, they head out and they're trying to just get any, any contact at all. And the submarine is all fucked up, and they're trying to fix stuff as well. So oh, dude, and they flash over to the sub, and you see this is like people who look like they are been damaged in the Civil War. They're all bandaged up, yep. and they got huge, like, rolls of gauze all yeah. over their heads. They lost the doctor, and they lost the second in command in terms of the doctor. So it's kind of well, like- Well, they got that one guy. Is well, that's what I'm saying. Doctor? They said, well, no, they because they said, like, oh, we, the doctor was up front uh, or in the back or whatever. And so, <laughs> you know what that means. You know, uh, and, <clears throat> but uh, we do have, I forget what his name was, Pierce or something like that. And he is, um, uh, he's got like first aid or whatever. Like he's kind of like, does, does some medical stuff. And so, <laughs> and so he's kind of in charge of making sure all these people don't die. Even though they got like broken legs, you know, punctured lungs. A bunch of them have concussions because obviously they're like, flying around the submarine. And yeah, so he's trying to save everyone's life. They're also trying to fix all this equipment and they can't, they, they really can't do it. They still have emergency power. They still have air. Only for a day and a half though. Yeah. So well, they, don't worry, man. And they Captain seems pretty confident. Yeah, that's the thing. They, they basically like, if everything was, if they were just sitting on a regular area and not on this edge and not having been covered, well, you'll, you'll end up getting covered by these landslides that are happening because they're on this edge of the canyon, they should be rescued in like six hours. Yeah. But instead- they kind of end up keeping behind this conflict. So in the beginning, he's super confident. He's like, we'll just hold tight. We got air. We got power. We don't quite have one of the air things is off a little bit, but we got plenty of food. Give the men whatever food they want. Give the men whatever drugs they want, kind of. Mm -hmm. And if they're hurt, obviously, not otherwise. And then uh, we'll have this young guy keep on calling up and try to get in contact. Mm -hmm. And he he's doing that, but then he freaks up out before they even get any contact oh yeah dude he has a total nervous breakdown he does and this would have they been to take him out of the bridge man. yeah and in, in the other films we would have seen them kind of chastise him later where the kid would have come back and been like can we can we keep this between us it was just really highly stressful and they'd be like um no kind you know yeah uh, <laughs> dude you lost it sorry like that's the thing being on a submarine you kind of have to be able to take stressful situations like that yeah you gotta you gotta be able to keep your so, cool he done fucked up a little bit but. one guy is keeping his cool because while charlton heston's walking around the sub all of a sudden you start hearing all sorts of flute music yeah yeah that's true and he's and playing we, flute. See, we see a flutist fluting away he's fla flautist i think oh i think and he's eating flautas oh, flute yeah. Boy Greg. Delicious thing. yeah <laughs> and i would say was this <laughs> This is listing his character listing on the credits. <laughs> and Luke Boy Greg. And he is from Nashville. Greg. So he's basically like, I should have been playing guitar, but I'm actually playing this flute. Yeah. And the I embarrass like, my family because I didn't pick up guitar. I play the flute. And the captain's like, cool. He's <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, you should have a guitar. Yeah. I don't know. It'd been a lot nicer if you had a guitar right now. Sorry. 
Yeah. But uh, all right. So also the surface ship is looking for the sub Mm -hmm. and they don't know where they're at. And at this point I was like, did the guys who smoked the sub not radio in anything? I think they... Or they're just like, we're going to play it cool, <laughs> try to, to get into America undetected. Nobody's going to know what we did. Maybe they like drifted. I don't know. Yeah, right, man. I don't know. They, Underwater currents They didn't them? say anything. I have no idea. There's no way. Yeah. So anyways, they eventually do get in contact. So they, they're able to get in contact with the submarine and kind of say like, what do you... Uh, what is your angle? What is your whatever? And they can pinpoint their location based on the angle that they're sitting at and, and you know, the depth that they're at. Yep. And then they go, okay, just check. Oh, and there's, there's a landslide. They go, oh shit, was that? And that was a landslide. Goes, okay, check and make sure you didn't get covered in rocks and dirt. And they check and they're covered in rocks and dirt. Yeah. They're like, oh darn, because yeah. they were going to send down a DSRV, yep. which is a deep sea rescue vehicle. Yeah. What's the other films that we've seen with the deep sea rescue one? Oh man. I feel like Hunt for Red October, I feel like had one too, right? Was the that same thing? one. Yeah. I think that was the right. same <clears> one. <throat> yeah. uh, what was the one we uh, watched not too long ago with, oh gosh, I can't think of it. Uh, Ernest Borg nine. Which well, one? I'm going to say that's a... It's a long list. Neptune Factor? No. Ice Station Zebra? No. This is uh, actually very oh, similar to... Torpedo Run. Torpedo yes. Run, probably. Yeah. There was one in there? Yeah. Was, uh, isn't that the one where they used the bladders and they, they were like breathing dust? That was yeah. one of the fact, uh, fun facts or whatever. Jamie had. Oh, my word, man. And We've seen so many of these. It's so yeah. hard to keep them all straight right now. <laughs> Ernest Borgnine films. Um no, but this is actually, this is very similar to Neptune Factor because because they can't use this DSRV, they have to kind of call in a special, even smaller little experimental mini sub, just like a Neptune Factor. And it's called the Snark. <laughs> I love the name. Yeah. Like what? And it's developed by a guy named Captain Grant, who is apparently a captain. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Has and all the rights of a captain, if you know what I mean. Long runs on the beach. Oh, yeah. He's running, and he's running real cool. He looks like the coolest person ever as he runs around. Dude, this was the weirdest running form it, I've ever yeah. seen. I feel like they were trying to go for something. Like, he was... It was a supposed to be off, like a maybe? hippie... A hippie... Oh, look at this hippie dippy uh, 70s guy super into this new thing called jogging. Maybe. Yeah, but I don't nobody know. jogs like that. Yeah. His hand motions were the strangest things. If you watch this movie, it's so weird. you're going to know what I'm talking about, yeah. listeners. It's the strangest running you're ever going to see. And then Ned Beatty comes along in a Jeep and is like, Captain Grant, they want to use the snark. And Captain Grant's like, oh, shit. Well, all right. right so at first he's kind of ignoring it. He's like, get out of he's here. Like, he's he's like, shit. Captain Grant, somebody yeah. needs us. And he's just running. And he's yeah. like, they want to use the snark. And then he's like, let's go. Yeah. Snark me up, bro. Right. And so they deliver... The snark, which is a very is very tiny, on uh, like a helicopter. Yeah. It, yeah. I kind of described it. I mean, it's not much larger than a clawfoot tub, really. Yeah, pretty much. With That's the top a, on very it. accurate. Um, and uh, they're basically he's like, time to get going. We're diving in twenty minutes. Like he's he's yeah. ready and raring to go. He's like, this can do anything. Oh, sand in there. Get out of here. We got like a a, a leaf blower on top of this thing. Like, don't worry about it. Yeah. We can blow all that dirt away. And he's like, but my boy Ned over here, what was his actual name? I can't remember. Ned Beatty. Ned Beatty. And I'm saying his uh, character name. Yeah, Ned Beatty. Okay. So Ned Beatty over here, he's got to go into this thing with me. And Stacy Keach is like, and Christopher Reeve at this point's there as well. He's kind of like his underling. They're like, uh, no, this dude does. And this guy comes out and he's got a fucking six pack. And like, he's like, yo, what's up? I'm like a sub, sub, uh, merciful captain. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, I know subs and subs know me. Yeah. And, and, and all right, so in Captain Grant's like, God damn it. <laughs> well, think about it, man. In a situation like this where it's life or death, and you yeah. have already have an experimental super sub, experimental, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want the guy who invented it <laughs> right. going with the captain, or do you want this guy who has to learn this system in I think it was like what, forty five minutes? Yeah. Well, till they dove, so yeah. you got even less time. I like the implication too, because I don't know if it was now or later where they're like, oh, it's later. Like, yeah, it's, it's later. It's, uh, that's so yeah. funny. I love that one. <laughs> oh, it was like once you got an hour into the film, all of a sudden there are all these quotes that started yeah. happening that I was just cracking up. Yeah. Because there's like nothing, no like notable lines, and no, then it was not just really. boom. It started I did, happening. I did think there there was some nice 
tension and some funny little things happening here mm-hmm. and some characters that you got, you got to know and like or whatever. But anyways, he goes down with this dude who's, uh, he even says, granted, good guy, does a good job, but he just doesn't, there's no way he's going to do better than the inventor. And so they go down and they're, they're trying to find the sub. They just don't even know. They need to get exactly like... In the middle of the ocean, they need to find this one little mm-hmm. thing, and they and go they down. They start pinging off something. Yeah, they're pinging, but they they have all these currents and stuff that mess with it, and they're in a canyon, so the sonar stops working. And the guy's like, "I see it, I see it, I see it." And he's like, "You got to got to be careful with this. Are you sure you see it? I see it." And what does he see? It's a, a sonar target. Yeah, they sunk yeah. a car to just try to ping off of it. And so he kind of screwed up, and he even comes up and says, "I screwed up. My fault. I got." I, I just couldn't see it and I couldn't, I, I took us to the wrong spot. And Captain Grant's like, I need Ned Beatty now. And they're like, can that I guy- I think it's Gates. Okay, Gates, yeah. Sorry. Um, Sorry, Captain Gates? Yes. Oh, oh so I see. That's Carradine's character. Oh, oh, sorry, not Captain Grant. I see. Yeah, at least it wasn't racist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, against David Carradine. Right. Um, And so uh, he's like, I need my guy. I need Ned Beatty. And, and this is when it starts getting fun. Yeah, because he's like, and they, they kind of, the implication, they kind of like, are like, are you sure? Kind of being like, he's not to, to be frank, a fat piece of shit. Yeah. And he's like, Ned, show him your muscles <laughs> or something. <laughs> so, so. And so he comes up and he does this funny little thing where he's like, <laughs> starts to show him muscles. He's like, I can do this. Like, come on. Like, I'm not, I don't have to show you muscles. I don't show whatever. Like, I invented this thing. I can yeah. go down in it. We tested it. Like, I can do this. And yeah. they're like, okay, fine. And he's like, so can I take him? He's like, take a little orphan Annie if you have to. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and so. And then all yeah. of a sudden. Down on we cut back over the sub every once yeah, in a while. Every once in a while, some stuff going on. There's all kinds of little things happening down there. Things are kind of going on. Fritz, they keep on checking the door, which is separating them from the um, area that's been flooded, and, and it's, it's, start, to it's starting to leak. And so they're really concerned about that as well. And there's all these little rumblings and little landslides and stuff as well. So you're never really sure whether the submarine's going to stay on the edge of the canyon or go over. Right. All that. And Charlton Heston's been keeping his cool for the most part. Yeah. Uh, but the stress starts to get to him. And this is like right after that other line. It's really uncharacteristic from everything else we've seen in the movie so far. He just he just yells, I'm starting to feel like a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. Yeah, because everything's going poorly. What? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I don't yeah. know what's going on, but I like it. Yeah. Uh, and and then, I, all right. Yeah. And then so when Ned and David, or Gates, yeah. sorry, <laughs> don't even know Ned's character's name. Right. But- Ned and David Carradine, they get into the snark. Like, <laughs> snark has these little uh, portholes, and you can just see Ned Beatty's face in there. Happiest, like, I've ever seen any face in my life. He was just... The looks he was giving were oh. just too funny, especially later on when he was, like, had his, like, thinking face on. He was like, it's, like, so funny. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, and so they go down, and they, they're able to find it immediately. They they see the, the submarine, no problem. Oh, yeah. And they start to clean off everything. And they don't have too much battery, but well, hold on, they have to they get up close yeah. and they're able to communicate. Oh yeah, they do some and they do some they Morse code. With a boom, wrench. Boom. Well they're not. The people inside. No, they have a wrench, wrench, dude. They do or they're also they have a wrench. wrench. Wow. I, I paused it and checked. Wow. So both it's sides have wrench. wrenches, two wrenches. Double wrench action. Wrench. Yeah, dude. People wow. pay good money for that type of stuff. That's true. And so they're kind of Morse coding back and forth and kind of being like, oh yeah, because they, they lost communication. That was the other thing. Yep. And so they're communicating back and forth, basically saying, we're going to be clearing you. We're going to be clearing the top off and then the DSRV is going to be able to come down kind of stuff. Yep. And so they start vacuuming all the, or blowing all the dirt off and they're not really sure they have enough battery, but Gates is like, keep going, 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 going. Like, just keep on pushing because we only have one shot at this. So just keep on pushing, pushing. And they get near the end and you think, oh, They've done it. Here we go. Miraculous. Everything's great. But what happens? All of a sudden, we get another avalanche underwater. And they are totally screwed because it turns the boat to an angle where the DSRV won't be able to latch on. Right. It does tell you a little bit about like the snark. Like if the snark was doing the rescue, guess what? They would have been there. No big deal. It would angle. They Gates would have been like, uh, ever heard of Ned Beatty? Because yeah. he's about to attach that thing no matter what the angle. Put it upside down. Ned can do it. Yeah. 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 So anyways, they go back up and they're like, ah, fuck. Like it's all screwed mm-hmm. and they don't really know what to do. 
They don't. But Charlton yeah. Heston has a plan. Yeah. He, doesn't he? He wants to blow the ballasts. And Only on one on side. On one side and try to just turn themselves over. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, and everyone's like, that's fucking crazy. And everyone's but like, don't do it. Yeah, let's do it, man. And so they get in there, but also the, the door's about to blow too. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, at the same time that they're deciding to do this, the door blows. Yeah. So everything's flooding. Everyone's evacuating real quick out of the control room and getting to the other side Except of the boat. Except one guy. Except one guy who's like the, the flutist. He's like, I got to pull these goddamn things down and keep them open or else we're not going to be able to blow the ballasts. Mm-hmm. And then Charlton Heston's like, get in here and help me or, or get, get in and, and we'll close the door. And the XO is now he's having his moment. He sees the opportunity. And he's like, I got to help everyone survive. So no, you'll never be able to close it just from your side. I'm going to help you close it from this side. And he basically sacrifices himself. The flutist sacrifices himself as well. And they are able to close the door, but also blow the ballasts. And they almost turn over. So there's a big rock blocking them. <laughs> yeah. So if, And now you're like, oh, wow, they sacrifice themselves for nothing. Movie ends. Yeah. That's the end. The end. Sub implodes. Yeah. Boom. Now, but Charlton Heston's like, he's real broken up about this, obviously, because like his best friend just like killed himself. He's like, I just gave that guy a whistle. Yeah. Did he have the whistle? Does anyone know? Did he have the whistle in there? Yeah. Is it on his neck? God <laughs> damn it. Like lost. Giving that to the next guy. Yeah. Anyways. <sighs> it's hard to come by a good whistle nowadays. And now they're like, we're screwed. We're going to run out of air. We're like, we may as well just die peacefully. Because like like also, in Phantom, like in my favorite movie, Phantom, just like Phantom, we'll just die of lack of oxygen. There you go. Yeah. Because also when they did this, they used up a lot of air reserve that they had. Yeah. That's so true. now they, they yeah. used they used to have like we're kind of, we're kind of close. I feel like yeah we're close ish. Yeah, because then they're like then Gates has an idea which is like we can blow the rock up that's holding them. Let's use a bomb. Like can we get a bomb? And they're like uh, we're the navy. Ever heard of it? Yeah, we can get a bomb. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, uh, it just actually bombs. we just went, fell, fell from the sky. We just have it now. Literally. And, and they have a bomb expert, and they're like, okay, you're going to go down with this bomb expert too, Gates. Sorry, Ned Beatty, get the fuck out of here. Stay up here and flex. Yeah. And yeah, I know you have big muscles, but can't go in this one. And they're like, go on down, and you got to place this bomb and. Either you kill them all or you save them all. That's basically <laughs> yeah. it. They're like, that's willing to roll the dice on yeah. this. Especially because the guy is going down there with armed explosive, which yep. is already dangerous enough, sure. using these little tiny mechanical arms on the snark. And he's never even seen the snark before mm-hmm. today. Yeah. So they go down. He's placing this thing. It's real like tenuous. He puts it down. And he almost seems surprised that he's able to do it. He's like, whoa. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> let's get the app. Let's Gold get sticker let's, for me. Yeah, let's get up out of here because this thing is gonna. It's real dangerous, actually. Yeah. And so they go up to the top, and Gates immediately is like, "I'm going back down." Because how else are we gonna know that we actually did what we needed to do to send the DSRV down there unless someone's watching? Right. And they're like, he, "Stacy Keach is like, okay, that actually makes that makes some sense, even though you're like a hippy dippy weirdo runner. Um, okay, you can go." And then Ned Beatty's like, move out of the way. I got to get in there, bro. And what? David, David Carradine. Says, no, no, no. Get it. No. He puts a single finger to Ned's lips and he says, not this time, my friend. Mm-mm. And you could tell in Ned Beatty's face, he knows what's happening. He knows yeah. what's up. You can actually see the sadness in his face. Yeah. He's like, there's only one reason why my best friend wouldn't let me be on the snark with him right now. And that's because he's willing to die and he doesn't want me to die. Is that it? That is. And then he, so he heads down and he's, wa- oh, yep. And he heads, yep, nope. I saw that hand motion for sure. And <laughs> that's what he's doing on the snark. For sure. <laughs> and so he, he heads on down and he's watching the submarine. All right. They, they blow the rock. He watches it. It turns over just enough to actually be able to be rescued. Say it isn't so. It's true. It's 100% true. And, but it's like in a seriously treacherous time now because of the explosion oh, yeah. and stuff. There's all kinds of landslides it's, it's happening. It's kind of shifted the sub and there's slides. Yeah. And so it's, it's right sliding on the edge. towards the edge of the canyon. Yeah. And the DSRV launches, they get all the most hurt people off first and get a bunch of oxygen. They seem like they waste a whole bunch of time. They probably should have thought that through. Um, people were... 
pretty slow yeah. getting on the DSRV. They were asking about, they were like, oh, who ordered the chicken? Am I right? Dude, all right. So that guy, how long do you think he was waiting to use that line? He's like, man, I've never been able to rescue anyone on a sub. That's the first thing I'm going to ask somebody who is literally on the verge of death. Who ordered the fried chicken? Ah, Took yes. you long enough. Yes. Got him. Nailed oh. it. And so, yes, the first group goes up. They go up and you could tell David Carradine, he is uh, a little concerned about how much time they have. He's yeah. like, are, is it launching? Have they turned around? Like, what's going on? Why are you wasting time? Get down here. You got to do this. And they get down and it starts to slide out of control as the last group of people, including the captain, are getting on. With and he's the like, DSRV he's like, up to he's it. He's like, get the DSRV out of there. Get the DSRV out of there. And they don't. And so what is what does he do? What does David Carradine do? He takes the snark, that beautiful, tiny little snark. Yeah. And he jams it right underneath our sub. Yep. And stops it from sliding. And you think- For just a second, yeah. For just a second. Just long enough just for them long to enough, get yeah. the DSRV off and away. And you think, oh man, maybe there's a shot. Maybe he can get out of this. Sub keeps sliding back and just crushes it. Yeah. <laughs> it just plummets off the cliff. Yeah. I mean, that thing is gone. Now, you do know if there was a sequel. If it was, if this was a massive hit, you know oh. Grey Lady Down and Tail, he's coming back. Yeah. With a vengeance. Dude, with the crab people from Aquaman. He's also been, because he was crushed, he was combined with the snark. Became oh, a half snark, word. half human. Snark man. Yes. But that didn't happen yet. Uh, instead, time, yeah, after this episode releases in this movie is refound its yeah. core audience. And you know, with the title like Grey Lady Down, that this episode will be wildly popular. Oh, people are going to be a little confused as to what we're talking about. Yeah, they will. And so they get up to the top with the DSRV out pops the captain and everyone is like, well, yeah, pull out your dick. Pull out your dick. And he's like, thank you, thank you. He pulls out his dick. He's like, I really don't deserve this, um, but Stacey I did. Stacey Keach is like, you're right. Put it away. This is my ship. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, yeah. And then he walks over. He has like a warm, warm cup of tea. And he's l- just looking out into the ocean, sadly. And that's that's, that's the it, end man. of the movie. Great yeah. lady down. Really, he's looking into the water, sadly, because he knows what's coming, which is David Carradine combined with the snark. And it's going to be um, terrible for Earth and humanity. Mm-hmm. And his number one pet peeve, people climbing slowly on ladders. Sure, yeah. <laughs> well, that's who's out there to kill, because that's who cost him his normal life. The end. All right. Whew. So there we go. Great lady down. Did we miss anything, guys? No, you guys did a pretty good job. Oh, thanks. I think oh, you man. covered wow. most of it. Yeah, probably like 80%. Did you talk about Christopher Reeve at all? Very little, actually. Uh. He didn't have a big role in this I didn't, I didn't ask if you had a big role or not I just asked if you talked about what's it. that Did you talk about the autoerotic asphyxiation at all you're talking about like what in the cutscenes or what no man David David Carradine oh his actual life you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh no uh, no we that was not you mentioned just kind of papered over that <laughs> we we did right, so, okay he did asphyxiate in this film though we that think is true. probably that's true yeah. or was he crushed yeah, potato, potato. Whatever. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Who would like to go first? I'll go first. Do it. It's going to be a quick one because I only <laughs> watched about half the movie. Um, <laughs> Solid. So you're yeah. going to give it a six. Uh, I'll give it a five from what I watched. It was okay. You know, I, I think uh, from what I read about it and what I watched, pretty plain. I didn't really think it was that thrilling or crazy just regular movie that happened on a submarine i feel like acting was decent i didn't i didn't find it that bad um and i guess for the time the uh the effects were about as good as we're going to get for a 1978 movie i feel like um but all of it was basically on a submarine so i like that part so i'm just gonna stick with five (laughs) sounds good that's it yep sorry all right man no that's all right uh, Brom, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, well, uh, this, uh, this was a return to form in a lot of ways. I feel like we got back to some of the classic sub action, you know, with, uh, some of the typical, uh, almost tropes now. You mentioned the yeah, wrenches. Torpedoes. 
depth charges, torpedoes, depth charges, crush depth. All of this. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and with it, you know, you get a lot of the suspense. I think my favorite part was uh, the the uh, the hatch with the that was kind of sweating because mm-hmm. the uh, ocean was on the other side, ready to burst in, and they just kept cutting to it, and you just knew it was going to blow any moment. Yeah, the hatch wasn't the only thing sweating. <laughs> Exactly. The viewer. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I didn't know where you were going with that. Nailed, yeah. nailed it. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't. It certainly wasn't the best of these uh, classic submarine films, though. I'm going to give it a five and a quarter. Oh, very nice. I kind of, I kind of right. looked at what I've been giving my other other ratings, and uh, kind of fit right in there at the five and a quarter, as I'd given uh, some movies like uh, Up Periscope a five point five. And I'd given uh, uh, Fantastic Voyage a five. I think it nestled right in between there for me. You only gave Fantastic Voyage a five? That is kind of incredible. Yeah. I, I like the title credits on that and not much else. That's true. Great title credits. Yeah. All those title credit heads out there. It's true. <laughs> very, very good. <clears throat> All right. One movie, uh, really? Operation Petticoat, 5.5. I sh- I. I I, I, I would like to actually rewatch that. I should have gave that a, a higher rating. So I had to give this uh, lower than Operation that's Petticoat. One, that's the one Jamie loved that we I all were kind of like Operation not Petticoat. on board with it. Yeah, Zach gave it's it a, a one. Zach gave Wasn't it a that one. Crazy. that terrible comedy movie we watched? Yeah. You mean that great one? It's a classic. <laughs> it was, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Terrible. Anyways, <clears throat> Zach, you want to go next? Yep. This movie great. was terrible. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to agree with Ben uh, for once. Uh, it, you know, most of the film in a sub. What were they talking about? Subs. What did we see? All at once, guys. Subs. subs. So <laughs> I'm going to give it a solid 5.1. Oh wow. Um, wow! I typically don't <laughs> like the older movies, but this one it was short, which I liked. I mean, short-ish. <laughs> no, no, it's like almost two hours. Yeah, I it know, actually but is longer than a lot of the some, ones. Some some of those ones just feel like they drag on. This one actually didn't feel feel like it dragged on too long. Um, but you know, I'm a big David Carradine, both in films and outside of films. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, he's uh, a real trailblazer. <laughs> yeah. So, and I like I like the ending because you know, one guy dies, one guy lives. Sacrifice. That's yeah, it. Sacrifice. It's the classic thing. All right. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, I got to counter counterbalance you guys. I think I almost wanted to put it even higher than I was going to originally, just because you guys are going a little low Ooh. for my taste. Ooh. So I'm going to come in at, but I'm going to keep it where I was going to put it, which is a six and a half. Um. I liked all the sub action. We were obviously were in a sub for a lot of it. I liked I like when it's a little bit different here. We're learning a little bit more about rescue kind of stuff, right? DSRV, snark, you know, these kind of things where like you don't it's not the torpedoes, it's not the depth charges, it's not the <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of these other this other aspect of a submarining. Um submarining? Submarining. Submarining? Sailing. Anyways, I did think the tension was nice. Um, <clears throat> I thought the characters were actually really good. Um, Charlton Heston, which usually he, I feel like he's kind of a bland actor, honestly, in a lot of stuff. Uh, he was kind of a studio system guy. I thought he was quite good in it, actually. Would you say he was fucking electric? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Why? Okay. I don't know. That's what Peter Travers of the Rolling Stone magazine said. About this? Yeah. Oh my god! Really? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, he was, he was probably talking about what Spider Man Three is that the one with probably was there, Amazing Spider Man Two. That movie is <laughs> like in the whatever. top thirty movies of all time on IMDb still. Um, <clears throat> and so yeah, no, I, I I thought it was actually a lot better than I expected. I do think it kind of straddles a boundary between the older style films and some more modern um, actiony type stuff happening. And yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed it. It's like a much better version of uh, Neptune Factor. It's like the same movie, but like uh, 100,000 times better than it. What about the big crabs and the funky algae and the seaweed? And the eels. Yeah. And the water. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. What about all the water? (laughs) Uh, Anyway, six and a half. 
even with all that water in there, I'm going to give it a six and a half. <laughs> My God! All right, okay. sorry. Just, <laughs> all right, listeners do not want to have that. Just make yeah. them happy. Bump it up to a seven. Keep them quiet. No, <laughs> six and a half. Seven. Do it. No, six and a half. Um, look at look. I'm going to change it here. Come on. Seven. Oh, okay. On. Well, it says I gave it a seven. All right, oh, no, come on, man. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I will go last because I don't have a choice. Uh, so, not going to lie, I was pretty bored for like a good length of the movie mm. basically until snark came in i can imagine that i feel like at some points especially with heston's character mm-hmm. it was almost surprising how like um nonchalant he was at all the time he's like yeah. ah well whatever man. Yeah, and uh <laughs> just keep on trying to do it you know and, we're uh, just on the bottom of the ocean been here before whatever uh, what's up with that eh, no, no well. rules good yeah and they had some of the cutaways to them informing the wives, which... It's got the, it's got the keech, though. <laughs> they informing keech. the yeah, wives. True. <laughs> but, I mean, like, we never saw we never saw them again. And Chris, Christopher Reeve never became Superman, which is weird, because he could have yeah, saved that should've. submarine immediately. He should have. It seemed like it was actually a little selfish of him. He should have just saved the submarine. Yeah. What was he the let, big deal? He let so many innocent people die. For, what, for what reason? Just so he people wouldn't know he was Superman? Yeah, dude, to conceal the identity. <sighs> My God. Anyways, once the snark came in and you had that kind of back and forth between Ned Beatty and especially David Carradine, I really liked his character in this. He's kind of like comical and kind of his look at the time. I mean, kind of looked like Tom Green, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but all in all, once the snark came in, I enjoyed it. I thought, oh, this is actually kind of cool, but it's not like good enough to really elevate it super high. So I'm going to go with lower than you, but at like a 6.25. Nice. I like to return the form. We have been doing a lot of, you know, different new. things. <laughs> 2018 cycle. Like, yeah, yeah, gold member's not, not too weird. That's true. <laughs> no, hey, I love gold member. Oh, oh yeah. Did you type that? What? I don't know. I didn't type type that. You guys typing over there? It's good podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> Knock off the typing. We're talking. Sorry. Uh right. Who's talking while I'm, ta- on my Who's talking while I'm uh, typing? Dude. All right. So trivia time. All about David Carradine. Did we mention that it was film debut of Christopher Reeve? Uh ooh. AKA Superman. Yes. Someone In did. In case people forgot earlier, let them know. And do you know where he went to school for acting? Oh man, Johns Hopkins, Juilliard. Him and Robin Williams were classmates. Mm. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So it's also based on the novel Event One Thousand by David Levely. When the U.S. Navy practices submarine rescues, it is designated as Exercise Thousand. If a real life rescue is required, it is designated as Event One Thousand. Ooh. Yep. Uh, Charlton Heston and producer Walter Marish embarked on board the U.S.'s Gunnard SSN 662 to get one day of submarine service experience. <coughs> they thought that was enough? The Gunnard was homeported in San Diego and uh, transited early one morning to pick up the star and the producer on Long Beach. It ran numerous drills, included flooding and fire. Uh, it was captained by CDR Henry Goodman Childs, who went on to serve as the first Navy four-star admiral as Commander-in-Chief, United States Strategic Command from 1994 to 1996. Hot damn. Yep. Uh, okay. So, the submarine used in the few of the breaching scenes is a tank-class submarine, the USS Trout 566, even though the submarine that it was supposed to be portraying here was actually an older skate class. The vessel was one of the last diesel submarines. It was then It was to be given to Iran, but the U.S. refused to turn it over due to the Iran hostage crisis. So it's kind of famous in that regard. Uh, it was still active at the time when it was filming. Uh, then after it, we didn't give it to Iran, it was decommissioned and scrapped, unlike its predecessor. Uh, and namesake USS Trout 202, which is on inter- eternal patrol, which I believe means it's sunk, I think. Eternal patrol. Yes. Yeah. Not Anyways. ideal. It also reused uh, submarine special effects footage and large-scale submarine models originally used in Ice Station Zebra, oh. previously mentioned, 1968 film, to depict the USS Neptune. 
the USS Navy's US Cayuga LST 1186 was also featured as the boat that Keach was on. And then the USS Pigeon ASR 21 and her DSRV was also featured uh, prominently in the film, obviously. Okay. And now, blow casting what ifs. Uh-oh. So, Great Lady Down features great character actor Stacy Keach. We all know and love him. I've been talking about him the whole time. The Keach. Uh, he's best known for Great Lady Down, probably. Duh, whatever. Um, he's done other stuff too. All right, just so we're clear, Keach is the captain of the rescue. He's kind of the, the guy. Ship, yeah, yeah. The surface ship. You don't know who Stacy Keach is? I'm not. A, you know, I'm not. You're not a, a Keach. Head. Not a, okay. Yeah. Well, um. Okay, so which other actors from Stacey Keach films would have done well here? All right. right. So he was in American History X. What about Edward Norton? Who does he play? Oh, dude, Edward Norton is for sure piloting that snark. Yeah, right? I think that's right. He even's got, he's got a similar, like, I think, attitude. Mm-hmm. I don't think he'd grow the beard, though. Then maybe does not. Does he grow a beard? I don't I mean, I don't even, I don't think I can recall what necessarily, I mean, he had like a mustache, I think, in American History X or a goatee or something. But I don't know. What about John Travolta? Because he was also in the film Gotti from last year. I saw that. Did you see Gotti? It was so bad, dude. Well, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited to watch it. <laughs> I watched it on a Friday night with the fiance. We hated it. Wow. Looking to end that relationship, huh? <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> bad. Uh, so, John Travolta. Where does he fit? Flute. Flute boy. Wow. It's a little old for Flute Boy. Oh, but dude, that'd be funny. He's got imagine, be- can you imagine if when he opens that door, it's just John Travolta playing a flute? I feel like he's a secretary of defense, though. The guy who's like, now tell me, if it crushes, is there going to be a nuclear explosion? Was that Bill Clinton? That or was like that Bill John Clinton. Travolta? That was Bill Clinton. He just came in and he just did that real quick. Sorry, Bill. He yeah. just left, though. All right, Bill, get out of here. Yeah, he left. I did not have sex in a submarine. <laughs> I didn't inhale. Uh, so anyways, that's what he'd be doing. <laughs> I thought that was actually kind of funny because the Secretary of Defense is like, if a submarine crushes, does it explode? And it's like, you're the Secretary of Defense. You don't know this fucking shit? Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Like, you're no. supposed to. <laughs> we wouldn't have all these submarines floating around if they were just crush and explode. Come on. Well, so this is a skate class. Mm-hmm. I'll get into it later. Anyway. Uh what about Mickey Rourke? Sin City 2. He was in that with him. Big old muscly, weird looking monster man, <laughs> Mickey Rourke. He wouldn't the fit in the summer. He 100% wouldn't fit in that snark. Get out of here. No. What if he yeah. was the snark? Uh, if he was just actually the snark, you ride him down to yeah, the you thing? Yeah, just pilot Mickey Rourke. <laughs> no. You can do that. Uh, or you make... Yeah, who could he be? <laughs> who could Mickey Rourke even be in this? I don't know. <laughs> You'd have to be on the submarine, probably. Uh, what about uh, Danny Trejo from Machete? Oh, dude, Danny Trejo. I would want him to be Charlton Heston, but I know that wouldn't... Uh... <laughs> it wouldn't be the role he'd get. No, it wouldn't. I feel like he'd get the demolition expert. But he'd be crazy. Oh, yeah. He'd be real crazy. They wouldn't know what he's going to do with those mobs. What about Kurt Russell from Escape from L.A.? Oh, Kurt? Yeah, our boy Kurt. He's the captain, right? <sighs> Kurt's the captain. Charlton Heston. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He's like cool, calm, and collected. He's like, and he's what got, up? He's got the hair from like Big Trouble Little China. He's like, just like shaking it out. Yes. That's a Kurt Russell. He's eyeing movie. the grease, but he's like, I don't need it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because yeah. he's pure. Yeah. What about uh, Ed Harris? Now, he starred in a Stacey Keach biopic called Skeech and the Gang. Keach and the Gang. Uh, he played Stacey Keach, actually. And wow. Stacey Keach played his own dad. Wow. And it, was, it wasn't actually focused on him being an actor at all. It was focused on his time being a bodybuilder. And you know what that means. Grease. Uh, yeah. Oh, you have to. I mean, it's part of the competition. That's why you're the ointment now. No, I'm the brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I agree to disagree. Uh, what about... Uh, uh, Okay, quickly, <laughs> change the subject. Uh, quickly, uh, Phantom Zone. Engage the Phantom. Phantom's engaged, sir. Uh, so this is very easy. I've used Ned Beatty all the time for this, actually. Have you? Oh, yeah. Because he's in 1941, 
Um, and he's in a couple other submarine films, but he's in 1941 with Dan Aykroyd and Dan Aykroyd was like a commander in Pearl Harbor. And I use Pearl Harbor all the time. So there you go, man. It's easy breezy. And uh, we know, you know, who is in Pearl Harbor? Uh, William Fickner. William? Oh, Billy. Billy. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Old and he's Billy. in Phantom. So there we go. That's, that's all I got. Easy peasy. Lemon do you think squeezy. I, do you think I should have done more about Keach? I don't know. He's a pretty famous guy. I think uh, I'm looking forward to that Keech and the Gang. Forward to it? It's already out. Keech and the Gang 2 was even better. Oh. Keech and the Gang 3 was not great. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to get caught up then. And now they're rebooting it. Great. Yeah, Keech plays his grandfather. Ed Harris plays Keech's dad. And who's the young gun? Um, Ryan Gosling, obviously. Oh, okay. Yep. Wow. What a star studded <laughs> cast. It is. All right. It's time for Subs Worldwide. It's it's sub 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 world world wide 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 wide. So, like you mentioned, the sub in Gray Lady Down is supposed to be a skate class submarine. I believe so. Yes. And when the Secretary of Defense was asking all the questions, he was mainly wondering what's going to go on if the sub implodes with the nuclear reactor. Right. The skate class is actually the U.S. Navy's first production of nuclear powered submarines. Right. So. He might not have known. Probably should. He probably should. He's a secretary of defense. Yeah. You should kind of know. Those and he, just like logically, he should have maybe thought that it wouldn't have flown to have it be where if a submarine sunk, that it would cause a nuclear disaster. Because guess what? Submarines could possibly sink. They could. So. Uh, so anyways, these are the smallest nuclear power attack submarines ever made. Whoa. Even today. They serve. Well, in- okay. What about our submarine? Oh, sorry. The USS Wet Floater? I mean, it's pretty small. It's nuclear and it's an attack submarine for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's only what? 35 feet long? Well, this is, you know, totally like uh, covert top ops. Type yeah, it's stuff. a little top yeah. secret. Nobody so I guess knows. Uh, we bought it from. Uh, we know it. We actually can't mention the yeah. country for fear of um, sanctions. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, these served for many years. They were in service from 1957 to 1989. And due to their small size, they were actually very cost effective. And they even tried to make these submarines smaller by shrinking the nuclear reactors. <laughs> uh, but they <laughs> With a realized... Yeah, I wish. Honey, I shrunk the sub. But uh, uh, yeah, they realized that the shielding still had to be just as thick. And that's what weighs a well, yeah. ton. So that wasn't super helpful. Uh, But they were hopeful because there was a nuclear-powered aircraft program, and they thought maybe there'd be a breakthrough there. That program was not successful. So nothing there. Hmm. So So how big were they? How big were they? Oh, they were about 267 feet and 7 inches long. Oh, we could do much smaller. Yes, agreed. For the engine, they had one nuclear reactor with geared steam turbines that generated 6,600 horsepower. So how fast does a submarine travel? Uh, So while it's on the surface, it'll travel at 18 knots, while submerged at 22 knots. Hmm. This, in the movie, we saw them go down way past crush depth. Oh, sure. Because the test depth on the skate was 700 feet. Oh. So we're quite a ways down past that. Yeah, double. Yeah. Uh, It held eight officers and 76 crew members. Uh, For the weapons, it had eight 21-inch torpedo tubes with six in the front and two in the back. Oh, that's party in the front, business in the back. Exactly. That's what I was thinking when I typed that out for Mm -hmm. some reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, It held 22 (laughs) torpedoes, 18 in the front and four in the back. So there were four of these boats in the class. The Swordfish, the Sargo, the Sea Dragon, and the Skate. And there were some notable events, especially with the Skate. The Skate was the first nuclear-powered sub to make a completely submerged transatlantic crossing. Wow. If that isn't cool enough for you, the Skate is also the first submarine ever to surface at the North Pole. And it did so on March 17th, 1959. It was up in the Arctic for 10 days underwater, and it surfaced, seems excessive, through the ice nine times 
and navigated 2,400 miles underneath it. Wow. The captain wrote a book about um, the goings-on called Surface at the Pole, The Extraordinary Voyages of the USS Skate. You going to read it? You know how I do with my reading. Mm -hmm. I have a backlog of books. From ever. From forever. Yes. Uh, I did. Now that you said that it was 700 as being the actual crush crush depth, and this is like more than double that. Mm -hmm. What about you think? Do you think this could have been the entire movie, the last moments before they died? Oh, yes. Yeah. I think that's right. And now my score is one. So change it. Okay. I'm joking. Let's keep it. All right. All righty. It was beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye. I'm glad it did. Mm Mm-hmm. I always love doing the the American ones, although I really want to do some of the really weird named ones, like the Benjamin Franklin class and stuff. Those are super weird? Well, just that it's like oh. these these classes of submarine where there's only like one of them that was ever oh, made, yes. and then they went to a new class. Right. Or well, they do like, like the special like one-off. I think yeah, exactly. The, Jimmy, the USS Jimmy Carter was one of those. Things like that, yeah. 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 So those will be fun when we do them. They're just, they're just ones you're never going to see. They're not going to be depicted in movies or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right, man. Uh, Alex, do you have any good sub or bad, uh, any sub news for us? You guys think I was actually looking up news? So, uh, starting tomorrow for a week, uh, the U.S. Navy... Uh, is sending a Los Angeles-class submarine over to Japan uh, to help uh, with a weekly-long submarine competition, they call it, uh, just to help with the uh, submarine anti-submarine warfare drill, I guess is what it's called. Um, So I guess Japan is worried about attacks from, like, North Korea or someplace else with submarines, I would assume. Uh, so the U.S. Navy sends over a submarine to help, and it's also the first time uh, Australian is sending a diesel electric submarine over there to help too. <laughs> How so cool. let me get this straight, Al. Yeah, it's We're a submarine a- <laughs> participating in anti-submarine warfare. Yes. Ex- yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I understood you correctly. <laughs> oh yeah. You know you got it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Speaking of Australia, Australia signs a major submarine deal with France. That's true. I remember that. I remember when the French, I think the French president was touring Australia, kind of promoting the deal or something. A while yeah. back, a long time ago. Yeah, I think it finally uh, was finally <coughs> signed and came through. Um, Australia is paying $50 billion in Australian dollars, which equates to $35.5 billion to state uh, to France's uh, naval group for 12 new submarines. Uh, so hopefully they're a little bit smarter than India and close the hatch. Oh, yeah. Hey, how much was that uh, kangaroo coin worth? Oh. 40 million. And how? Oh. So, yeah, a whole bunch of kangaroo coins getting sent over. Oh, dude, I would love that. (laughs) Fly them on over. (laughs) Or bring them over to the submarine. Oh, yes. Oh, except they don't have, it's kind of like a catch-22. Like, they don't have the submarines yet to bring the kangaroo coins. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't do it. You know what they should do? Like they What's put that? a monkey in space. They should uh, mm-hmm. they should put a kangaroo on a sub and see what happens. Good call. They could a good call idea. it Operation First Kangaroo to Go Down Under. Ah. <laughs> oh. There it is. That'd be, the, that'd be the headline. That'd be like the New York Post headline. Kangaroo down under. Yeah. It would be. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Uh Another news story, a couple weeks ago, at the end of January, uh, Twitter erupted uh, with photographs showing the U.S. attempting to sink a mini-sub that looked like a submarine that North Korea uses called the Shark. Um, uh, Turns out these... One more time, what? No, go on. I want to hear it all. Turns out these are photographs from 2004 that someone decided to reprint (laughs) and uh, was quickly called out. Um, However, uh, the U.S. Navy does use uh, many submarines like this that they build uh, as targets um, to sink. Uh, So it does actually look like a North Korean sub, uh, but it was not a real North Korean sub that everyone thought it was from 2004. Because someone posted a picture that was 15 years old? Yes, exactly. And it's got uh, 
And, uh, okay, so I was looking up other news for 1978, uh, hoping to find <laughs> some some wrestling news here for everybody out there. Oh, but, come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't find anything for the exact date where this came okay. out at, but close enough, I did find that the wrestler of the year was Dusty Rhodes, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, and the most hated wrestler of the year was Ric Flair, who's still around. So, pretty cool. Ric uh, Flair. Ric Flair. Can't Woo! believe he's been wrestling for that long. Yeah. Um, now, uh, other famous wrestlers that are still wrestling today that were born in 1978, <laughs> uh, Tamina, Sheamus, and CM Punk, and they're ah, all still, uh, I'm sure you've heard of them, so they're all really big wrestlers still to this day, born in 1978, they all have a birthday, so happy early birthday, guys. That's it. Uh, also, uh, my Steam just opened up spontaneously here, and I swear it is advertising a game called Cold Waters. 50% off, guys. 19, Whoa. Nine, 20 bucks. Play as a uh, command a nuclear submarine in a desperate attempt to prevent mutually assured destruction. So Cold uh, Waters? Cold Waters. So they're listening to us. Big Brother, Jeff Bezos. I see it. I'm looking at it too by Killerfish <laughs> Games. Everybody, that's the uh, developer posi- and yep. publisher. Very positive reviews. Not a sponsor. Thank you. Alex. All right. Very cool. <laughs> very cold. Ooh. All right, <clears throat> Alex. You is that all for your news? That's it. Did you guys find something? No, I didn't. I thought, I thought that was very comprehensive. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. I was trying to figure out what movie that I would have known why Seamus is ringing a bell in terms of movies. It was He was in the Ninja Turtles, the Michael Bay Ninja Turtle sequel as Rocksteady. Oh. Bebop Be- Rocksteady. Yeah, he was Rocksteady. Like, I know spot on. that he was in a film. Was there a submarine in there? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. If not, why'd you even watch it? I actually didn't. Good. And, I just knew he was in it. In Argentina, they call it tortugas. Oh, because when I was there, they were say it before (laughs) they were advertising the movie, and it was tortugas. I think that was like from the first episode of this podcast. (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) I think you may have talked about that. that. Yeah, Yeah. I think it's first or second episode. Well, then I'm on repeat, so I'm done. (laughs) You should have saved that. You should have saved that for a year long recap. Put that in next week's episode. Yeah. 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 All right, Mr. Brom, what do you got for us? Tube three, ready to fire, sir. Commence the countdown. Give it to me. You uh... are. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Am I supposed to just talk over it? Uh, no, just go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really long one. Yeah, really good one. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. Uh, it was kind of so weird. Alex, Alex shared uh, some sub news. Well, if you guys remember uh, many episodes back, we had some alternative sub news. Let's get you caught back up on up alternative sub news around the world. Oh, nice. Uh, also, Alex mentioned some uh, wrestlers there. WWE. How about Daniel Pooter was in the headlines last weekend because he was sworn in as a sheriff's deputy in the state of Arkansas. You're wondering, where's the sub news? Where's the WWE? Well, Daniel Pooter is a WWE wrestler, and uh, Kurt Angle says that Pooter put Kurt Angle in one of the most (laughs) dangerous submission holds he's ever been in. Wow. Wow. What was his last name, Ben? Pooter. (laughs) Pooter. Uh, spelled P U D E R, not P O O T E R. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. I was wondering. <laughs> yes. Uh, number four. Let's take a look at the uh, printing industry. According to exclusive market data from Smithers Pira, the dye sublimation print market will more than double across the next five years. So. Sublimation. Got right. a little. Uh, if you guys didn't money. catch it, it was sublimation. I picked it up. <laughs> die sublimation. Yeah, if you got a little extra Dye money sublimation. to invest, invest in die sublimation. Hmm. <clears throat> Number that's three. My, that's my favorite phase, phase change, actually. Sublimation. Uh, is that solid to a gas? That is. 
Very nice. Get you guys nerding out. <laughs> that's why they call me the brain, the and they don't. Opposite. That's why they don't call me the ointment. <laughs> <laughs> what a name, <laughs> the ointment. <laughs> Love it. Number three, uh, just to catch everybody up in the world of PewDiePie, he has broken eighty-five million subscribers. He is still the number one most subscribed to YouTube channel. T series hot on his tail, trailing by. On any given day, around 30,000, which is such a tiny number when you're up to 85 million T-Series hot on his tail. To keep them at bay, he live-streamed Fortnite and Roblox last week. But what about... um, Oh, I forgot the name of the song. Something Sharks. Never mind. <laughs> so I was going to say, how far how far are we behind? We've got to be a few million at least. Then uh, what do we got? Uh, we're we got only like, like ten or fifteen behind. Whoa. Okay. So we're oh. we're right. We're in between. Ah, I'm, yeah. mis- I'm misreading the numbers. We're only. I, I I thought we had fifteen subscribers, but you're saying we're fifteen subscribers behind PewDiePie. Correct. Wow. Oh. Okay. Found so it. it. PewDiePie needs to do the baby shark dance because it has over two billion views on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be also just be a, a plain egg because apparently that's very popular as well. He's got an uh, egg. You didn't see the thing that broke the Instagram record or something? It was just a picture of an egg. Yeah, and then one uh, oh. one posted a picture with uh, the uh, Mike Tyson tattoo on the egg, and Mike Tyson retweeted and said, "Stop posting this shit." That's all stupid shit. It's, uh, millennials. Uh, yep. Uh, number two. Where are we at here? Oh, uh, for those of you concerned, uh, South Africa's real gross domestic product growth will expand by a paltry 1.3% in 2019, according to a World Bank projection. This puts it among the worst performers in sub-Saharan Africa. Wow. Sub. Oh, there it is. There Love it is. sub-Saharan Africa. And number one, this is this is hot news. This was uh, This was updated. About an hour ago, a substitute teacher told her students that Martin Luther King killed himself, and she is now being asked to resign. They investigated a little further, (laughs) and she had also told her students that they were not true Christians if they didn't support President Donald Trump, and uh, said that based on the clothes they were wearing, they were going to be living a life in prison. So she has stepped down. She forgot her medication that that day. Is that Sydney, Ohio? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, this is in North Carolina. Wow. The Sydney, Ohio of the East Coast. All right. That was top five uh, alternative sub facts or sub news. Oh, shit. What do we we (laughs) got there? (laughs) Nothing. All right. All right. Thanks, Ben. Well, thank you. Wow. Stand up and take Thanks a bow, Dad. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Daddy was there. <laughs> and here it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> Do 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 do. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you, just, you just edited all that out, right? Yeah, I was saying, oh, there's okay. a lot of editing going on right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, just cut that into the fart noise. <laughs> <laughs> Zach facts, everybody. Do 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 do. Zach Facts, it's Zach Facts. When you're going down, get some Zach Facts. When you're going down. Nice. Sit down, grab a beer or water, whatever you prefer. And get ready for some Zach Facts for Grey Lady Down, the film that most of us watched. I've got three facts tonight. Does anybody want to hear one? Mm, I, I would know. like to hear three. Yeah, I was gonna say more than one myself. Okay, so I'll I'll give I'll give all three. Is that is that the, what we're saying? Sounds good to me. Let's all do right, it. so let's go with fact number one. The original runtime was four hours and one minute, but 
they decided to cut that scene where the whole crew watched the entire Jaws <laughs> film. Yeah, that's right. They only kept a little portion of that one. Yep. <laughs> it didn't seem like they got, re- they got really far into the film, it seemed like, right? Because they were on the boat, like, battling Jaws, I think. The, so they must have been watching they, it for, like, an hour. They actually cut least. the film differently in this movie, to be honest, because they, they, they were showing them watching it, like, when they're when the uh, the crew members are like making jokes because the the volume gets cut out, right? Yeah, and they're showing Brody, Chief Brody, throw the uh, blood and the guts in the water with smoking right. a cigarette, and then all of a sudden they cut to a scene later in the movie when Hooper is in the cage. When in reality, if they were actually watching the real real film, it would have been the shark coming up out of the water while Brody was throwing the blood and guts. So they, they nice. messed that up. And if you're just tuning into uh, Jaws facts, um, <laughs> people like I would love that you could put Jaws. that in like an artistic film or something where you, like you're just sitting there and they just watch it, for watch the entire the thing. entirety of the film. And there's this music. Okay, that didn't work. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, say, I, was right. saying, I thought you were gonna do a fart. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, right. Just on the fart. All right, fact number two. Is everybody ready for fact two? I am. Fact me, bro. Man, my phone's oh, it's on mute. Um, <laughs> all right, fact number two. Charlton Heston said David Carradine was an amazing actor. However, he spent a lot of time in his room closet. Okay. All right. Mm, uh, get it? <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> last, <laughs> last fact <laughs> the gray lady down film was very popular popular enough that they created a porn film the name of the porn <laughs> film was <laughs> Going down on a gray lady. <laughs> and those are the Zach facts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Zach, can you make a fourth Zach fact on the fly just in case they cut out the second one? <laughs> um, um, no. Thanks for listening to Submersion. Find us on SoundCloud and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Can't get enough of us? Don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every Thursday. And if you like what you heard, please go ahead and give us a rating.